This is a video showing an experimental high-powered Rife system using the original Rife frequencies of 11.78 MHz and 11.43 MHz as determined by Royal Raymond Rife. At the present time the system consists of a one half inch diameter by 18 inch long Rife tube filled with a mixture of 90 percent helium and 10 percent neon. The tube is excited by a capacitive discharge from spiral wire coils on the ends of the tube. Approximately 10 inches of the tube is active during operation. The RF power source for the tube comes from a modified amateur radio amplifier which is designed to produce approximately 1500 watts peak power output during normal operation. The unit has been substantially modified to work in this particular system. This is a view of the rear of the amplifier. The large coils shown here are for use in amateur radio service. They are not used in Rife operation. Here you can see the wire has been disconnected from the output of the amplifier tube to the input circuit for these coils for the amateur radio service. A separate coil has been added, shown here, above the vacuum tuning capacitor this resonates at a frequency of approximately 11.78 megahertz and is used to tune the amplifier to that particular frequency of operation. The amplifier tube is an RCA type 7C24 commonly used in television transmitters. It is capable of producing 5,000 watts of power at a frequency of 215 megahertz. In this service the peak output power is approximately 1500 watts and is limited by driving power requirements and the capabilities of the power supply. The tube measures approximately 6 inches in diameter and 6 inches high. A large amount of forced air cooling is required to cool the tube and it consumes approximately 250 watts of power just to heat the filament in the tube. A large blower is used to pressurize the chassis and to cool the tube. The roll around cabinet contains the power supply. A large plate transformer supplies high voltage for the amplifier system. A bank of filter capacitors and rectifiers handles converting the AC power into up to 3,000 volts DC power for the amplifier to function. There are appropriate safety interlocks and control circuits to prevent accidental damage to the amplifier and to provide a certain measure of safety for the operator. In order to provide drive for the tube, a relatively high RF voltage must be supplied if you are going to drive the tube using coils wrapped around the tube as is shown here. There is no electrical connection made to the internal electrodes of the tube. The internal electrodes cannot withstand sufficient power to drive the tube at a high power level, therefore capacity coupling must be used. In order to get this high RF voltage, a parallel tuned tank network is used, here consisting of a coil of copper wire, which is center tapped, connected across a large variable capacitor. This capacitor is adjustable to allow the frequency to be adjusted and to tune the circuit to resonance, providing maximum RF voltage to the tube. Because the capacitor does not have adequate capacitance, a small fixed vacuum capacitor, shown here, is installed in parallel with the main coil and the capacitor. In this view, we're looking at the tank tuning capacitor, which is connected between the output of the tube and the ground. It is tuned by the large adjustable vacuum capacitor, shown directly beneath the coil. This wire, connected to this tap on the coil, takes RF energy from the coil brings it over to the secondary tuning coil. The return RF path comes back through this other wire and comes back to the ground connection on the coil. These two wires form a parallel RF transmission line resulting in minimal RF radiation from the amplifier. We don't want to radiate any extra power at this frequency because this is in a shortwave band and we do not wish to cause any interference to shortwave broadcasters. The parallel tuning network here develops about 5,000 volts RF across these two leads here. Those are fed to the tube and they cause the ignition of the gas in the tube and a powerful discharge occurs in the tube during normal operation. Because this is an experimental setup, you'll see such things as tube mounting holders with plastic parts here designed to hold ignition wires and other features uh, designed to use with different types of tubes. In this particular case, this tube is light enough that it's simply held by the wires which feed RF to it. So that supports the tube and 
uh, allows it to be adjusted at the same time. In normal RF amateur use, the amplifier shown here sitting on top of the rack would be mounted in the lower part of this cabinet. So it would be a completely enclosed unit. In this case, it is sitting on top of the cabinet simply because it is easier to make the connections to the tube by running wires directly from the side of the amplifier to the tube. In the lower part of the rack are mounted three pieces of equipment. The top unit is a small amateur radio transceiver, a Yaesu FT747GX, which has been modified to operate on a frequency of 11.78 and 11.43 megahertz. Directly beneath that is an MFJ 969 antenna tuner. This is used to match the output of the transceiver to the input of the 7C24 amplifier tube. Beneath that is a Heathkit function generator which is designed or adjusted to put out a square wave at 4 Hz simply used to key the transmitter on and off to allow a 4 Hz pulsing signal to be applied to the RF carrier which is going to the tube. This is the control panel for the power supply. Turning on the left hand circuit breaker turns on high voltage 240 volts to the input of the power transformer allowing the system to function. At this point we can turn on the 747 transceiver. It now shows a frequency 11.43 megahertz which is where it's adjusted at the present time. To operate the system we have right now a shorting wire which is connected across the high voltage power line, shorts it to ground so that there is no possibility of turning the unit on and harming the operator of the system. Now we will turn on the switch for the fans and the switch for the filament for the 7C24 amplifier tube which will warm up in about 20 seconds as soon as this meter comes up to about 18 indicated on the scale we will be ready to go with the unit and it should be there any time. All right, filament power is on, everything is running normally. Now at this point, to tune it properly, we take this tuning capacitor and adjust it for minimum capacity. That throws the circuit off resonance so it is not functioning. <coughs> then we turn on the FT747 by grounding this wire. 747 is now putting out power. The meter here indicates we have power. We tune it for lowest SWR, maximum power into the system. Sorry, I went the wrong way there. Now we go up here and we look at this meter here and it's reading full scale. We've adjusted this correctly. Now we go over and we adjust this tuning knob on the capacitor and we adjust it until the tube lights. We adjust it for maximum brightness. Now what is happening at this point is approximately 70 watts of the 100 watts coming out of the 747 is being fed directly through the amplifier into the tube. That is sufficient to light the tube, but we want to be able to use more power to operate the system. So the next thing we'll do is get the amplifier in full operation. To do that, we turn the 747 off. Now there is no power. We remove the high voltage shorting wire. We turn the high voltage on, look at our high voltage meter, turn the switch on, about 1700 volts. We adjust our bias on the amplifier tube so it just starts to draw plate current. That biases the amplifier into class B mode of operation so it produces an undistorted sine wave output to drive the tube. Then at that point, we'll switch the 747 unit on. And lo and behold, we now have high power operation of our Rife tube, which is now running at approximately 450 to 500 watts. Because the tube cannot handle continuous power, we're pulsing it in a 50% duty cycle. When a larger tube is installed, it may be possible to operate it at full power. We also will be able to raise the power level on the amplifier to approximately 500 to 1,000 watts if necessary. And as you can see, it operates very nicely, produces a large amount of power, 
and works uh, quite well. I can feel the pulsing from here. That concludes my demonstration of this experimental rife system.